In this guide, we will create a skate park. Using various tools and commands available with Vectorworks Fundamentals, we will create the park, stairs, multiple obstacles, and a gazebo. Then we will create viewports and place them on a sheet layer to present the model. Now that the file is set up, we will create the shapes for the concrete base and bowl of the skate park. We will use the rectangle and circle tools to create the bowl. In the basic palette, double-click on the rectangle tool. This will open the Create Object dialog box. In the Create Object dialog, set the width to 12.5 and the height to 21.65. Make sure the Position and Next Click option is checked and click OK. Since Position and Next Click was checked, you will need to click somewhere near the origin, the 00, zero point in Vectorworks, to create the rectangle. In the basic palette, click on the Circle tool. Make sure the first mode, Radius mode, is enabled in the toolbar. Place your cursor over the top left corner of the rectangle. When you see the top left Smart Cursor queue, click once and move the cursor up and to the left. Press the Tab key to activate the floating data bar. Enter 5.75 for the length field and press Enter or Return twice to place the circle. Now place another circle on the bottom right corner. The circle tool should still be active, so move your cursor over the bottom right corner of the rectangle, and when the bottom right Smart Cursor queue is visible, click once and move your cursor down and to the right. Press the Tab key to activate the floating data bar. Enter 7.375 for the length, and press Enter or Return to place the circle. Next, using the Add Surface command, we will combine these objects into one polyline. Press the X key once to activate the Selection tool in the Basic palette. Select the rectangle and the two circles by holding the Shift key and clicking once on each object. Note, if the last circle you created is already selected, you do not need to click on it again. With all three objects selected, right-click on Windows or Control-click on Mac on the selected objects and choose Add Surface. The three objects will be combined into a single polyline object. Now, we will fill at the corners of the bowl. The Fillet tool will allow us to reshape this polyline and change the corner vertices to curves. Now, in the Basic palette, activate the Fillet tool. In the toolbar, switch to the third mode, Trim Mode, and enter 1.4 for the fillet radius. Move your cursor over the top left of the polyline. The curved segment of the polyline will highlight in red. Click once, and move your cursor over the top horizontal segment of the polyline. This segment will highlight in red as well. Click once more to fill at the corner. Repeat this action for the corner of the top left curve segment and the left vertical segment. By clicking once on the top left curve segment and once on the left vertical segment. Finally, click once on the bottom horizontal segment and then once on the bottom right curve segment to fill at this corner as well. Next, in the toolbar, change the fillet radius to 2. Click once on the left vertical segment and once on the bottom horizontal segment to fill at the corner. Now, using the same fillet radius, click once on the right vertical segment and then once on the bottom curve segment to fill at this corner. Finally, change the fillet radius in the toolbar to 2.75, click once on the top horizontal segment and then once on the right vertical segment to fill at the last corner. Using the Offset tool, we will create a large offset polyline. In the Basic palette, activate the Offset tool. In the toolbar, enable the Offset by Distance and Duplicate and Offset modes, and enter 4 in the Distance field. Click once outside of the polyline. A new offset polyline will be created on top of the original polyline. 
Now, with the new polyline selected, go to Modify, Send, Send to Back. The original polyline will now be visible above the new offset polyline. Next, we will use the Polygon tool to create more of the concrete base. Activate the Polygon tool in the Basic Palette. In the toolbar, make sure Vertex Mode is enabled. Move your cursor over the midpoint of the top left curved segment of the outer polyline, and click once when you see the midpoint cursor Q to start the polygon. Move your cursor to the left horizontally and press the Tab key to activate the floating data bar. Enter 21.5 for the length and press Tab to lock the length field. Move your cursor to the left until the horizontal slash length smart cursor Q appears and click once to start the next segment. Move the cursor down and to the left. Press the Tab key to enter the floating data bar. Enter 9 for the length. Press Tab again. Enter negative 135 degrees for the angle. And press Tab once more to lock the angle field. When the Smart Cursor queue angle slash length is visible, click once to start the next segment. Press Tab again to activate the floating data bar. Enter 10.5 for the length field. Press Tab, enter 135 degrees for the angle field, and press Tab again to lock the angle field. When the Smart Cursor Q angle slash length appears, click once to start the next segment. Repeat the same process for the next segment. For this segment, enter 27 for the length field and negative 135 degrees for the angle field. Repeat this process again. This time, 50 for the length and negative 45 degrees for the angle. For the next segment, enter 22 for the length and 40 degrees for the angle. Finally, to complete the polygon, move the cursor to the right horizontally until it intersects the outer polyline. Double click to complete the polygon when the Smart Cursor Q object slash horizontal is visible. Select both the new polygon object and the outer polyline object by holding the Shift key and clicking on both objects. Right click on Windows or Control click on Mac on both objects and choose Add Surface to combine the objects into one polyline. Using the same procedure as shown previously, use the Fillet tool to adjust the corner vertices of the concrete base polyline. Activate the Fillet tool in the Basic Palette, enable the third mode, Trim Mode, and set the fillet radius to 6.25. Move your cursor over the top horizontal segment of the polyline. When the segment highlights in red, click once. Move the cursor over the left adjacent segment and click once more to fill up the corner. Now, Fill the next six corners as shown. Using the Push Slash Pull tool, we will extrude the concrete base polygon and then use the Subface mode of the Push Slash Pull tool with the Line and Polyline tools to create stepped surfaces. In the view bar, Go to the Standard Views menu and choose Write Isometric. Open the 3D Modeling Toolset and activate the Push Slash Pull tool. Enable the first mode, Extrude Face mode, in the toolbar. Move your cursor inside the larger outer polyline. The face will highlight in red. Click once and move the cursor vertically. Press the Tab key to activate the floating data bar. Enter 3 in the Distance field, and press Enter or Return twice. Open the Standard Views menu in the View Bar and switch to Top View. Activate the Polyline tool in the Basic Palette and enable the first mode, Corner Vertex Mode. Make sure Automatic is set in the Plane menu in the View Bar. 
Move the cursor on top of the extrude. The top surface will highlight in blue. Click once on the left corner of the bottom horizontal segment to start the polyline. Move the cursor across the top of the extrude until it intersects the opposite side. When the Smart Cursor Q object slash Y appears, double click to create the polyline. Switch to a left isometric view through the standard views menu in the view bar. You will see the polyline was drawn on the top surface of the extrude. Activate the push slash pull tool in the 3D modeling tool set. Enable the third mode, subface mode. Place the cursor over the polyline we just drew. It will be highlighted in red. Click once. Move the cursor over the extrude. It will also highlight in red. Click again. Move the cursor over the left side of the extrude. The left side will highlight in red. Click once more and move the cursor down. Press the Tab key to activate the floating data bar and enter negative 1.5 in the distance field. Press Enter or Return twice to move the face. The object is now a generic solid. Switch back to a top view using the standard views menu in the view bar. Activate the polyline tool in the basic palette and switch to the point on arc mode in the toolbar. Draw a curved polyline to the left of the vertical line we drew previously. Click once at the top of the concrete base. Move the cursor down and slightly to the left about one-third the way across the concrete base. Click once. Move the cursor about two-thirds the way across the concrete base and slightly to the right. Click once more. Move the cursor down about halfway to the bottom edge of the concrete base and a little more to the right. Click again. Finally, move the cursor down and to the left until you intersect the bottom edge of the concrete base. Double-click to complete the polyline. Switch back to the left isometric view and activate the push slash pull tool with the sub-face mode active. Click once on the curved polyline, move your cursor to the left, and click once on the concrete base. Now, click on the bottom left face of the concrete base. Finally, move the cursor down, press Tab, and enter negative 1.2 in the distance field, and press Enter or Return twice to move the face of the concrete base. We will now use the Taper Face and Fillet Edge tools from the 3D Modeling Toolset to create sloped and curved surfaces. In the 3D Modeling Toolset, Activate the Taper Face tool. First, we need to set the reference plane. This plane will be used to determine the pivot point for the taper operation. With the first mode, Tangent Faces mode enabled, in the toolbar, move your cursor over the uppermost face of the generic solid. The surface will highlight in red. Click once. Now, let's select the face of the taper. Move the cursor over the adjacent vertical surface. The surface will highlight in red. Click again. Finally, move the cursor out to set the angle of the taper. The taper angle should be about negative 66 degrees. Click once more to complete the action. Activate the Fillet Edge tool in the 3D Modeling tool set. In the toolbar, click on the Fillet Edge Tool Preferences button. In the Fillet Edge Preferences dialog, check Select Tangent Entities, Enable Constant Radius Mode, and set the radius to 4. Click OK. Select the edge that intersects the bottommost face with the adjacent vertical face. It will highlight in red. Hold the Shift key to select both segments. Click the green checkmark button in the toolbar to complete the action. The generic solid is now a fillet object. You may notice that the curved portions of the generic solid appear segmented. 
This is because, by default, the detail level for the OpenGL render mode is set to low. Next, we will adjust these settings. Go to the Render Modes menu in the view bar. Make sure OpenGL is active, and select OpenGL Options at the bottom. In the OpenGL Options dialog, set the detail to Very High. Click OK, and Vectorworks will re-render the object. The curved portions are no longer segmented. Next, we will use the Extrude and Subtract Solids commands to carve out the bowl from the concrete base. Then, we will use the Fillet Edge tool to curve the inside face. First, we will use the original polyline we drew to create an extrude to subtract from the concrete base. To select the polyline, activate the Selection tool in the Basic Palette. Press and hold the B key on your keyboard to activate the X-Ray Select mode. This mode allows you to see through and select objects beneath other objects. Move your cursor over the polyline and select it. With the polyline selected, go to Modify, Move, Move 3D. Set the Z offset to 3 and click OK. The polyline is now on the surface of the concrete base. With the polyline still selected, go to Model, Extrude. Set the extrusion to negative 2.5 and click OK. Holding the Shift key, select both the extrude and the concrete base. Go to Model, Subtract Solids. In the Select Object dialog, use the back and front toggle buttons to highlight the concrete base and click OK. The extrude is removed from the concrete base. We now have a solid subtraction object. Activate the Fillet Edge tool in the 3D Modeling toolset. Click on the bottom edge of the subtracted area. It will highlight in red. Set the constant radius to 2.5 in the toolbar and click the green checkmark button to complete the action. With a concrete base geometry complete, we will now give it a fill color using the Attributes palette, then we will place it in a new class. With a concrete base selected, set the fill color to gray in the Attributes palette. Next, click on the Classes button in the view bar. In the Organization dialog, click New to create a new class. Name the class Concrete Base, uncheck Edit Properties After Creation, and click OK. Finally, with the Concrete Base selected, go to the Object Info Palette and change the class to Concrete Base.